MTV came to our high school and you had to fill out a 20 page packet and some of the questions were, you know, who are your best friends and what do you hate about them? Who's gonna be prom queen? And I said, I don't know and I don't care as long as it's not Lauren Conrad. So look, I knew what I was doing, you know, and, and it worked, obviously. You've always been known to be very opinionated and you yes. don't hold back. <laughs> How has that kind of helped or hindered you as you've become an adult and started a business? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, because I've always just gone after what I want and I've made things happen. And so obviously without that, I don't know that Uncommon James would even exist. You know, I just sort of, I don't know, I think at a young age, I just learned if I want something, I have to do it. You know, no one's gonna do it for you. And so I'm not afraid to, you know, call it like it is and have some tough conversations, which probably ultimately helps with owning a company. You have kids wear, mm -hmm. you have the jewelry, which is what you started with. Yes. Now you have the home wear. They're very different things. How did you make sure that it all felt cohesive? Yeah, I mean, it can be a bit of a challenge at times, but I think because all three really represent me and my style, in a sense, it's um, it just flows and it's easy since I am drawn to really effortless, minimal pieces. Why open the store in Nashville? You know, you could have opened in LA that you right. know very well. Why here? Um, a few reasons. One being that I live here, so it was easier for me to just pop in and actually be here and really oversee the entire process. I think Nashville is having a huge moment right now. Mm. And with the show, Very Cavalier, you know, I, I went back and forth. I knew the show was happening and I, I kept trying to decide if I actually wanted to open up a store or not. And ultimately I decided I should because if it's going to be on TV, I want to have a destination for people to go to. And I'm very happy that I made that decision because it has become a little bit of a destination. I mean, we have girls coming straight from the airport with their luggage going, this had to be my first stop. And that's just the coolest thing in the entire world. It is on your doorstep from where you live. so. You know, how involved are you? Is it kind of like a struggle to, to be hands-on, but also not be too hands-on? Right, exactly. I've had to learn how to sort of delegate and pass off some responsibility, but it is my baby. It's my fourth child, I say. And so I like being involved, and I'm proud to say that I've had a hand in every facet of the company. I mean, I, I launched on Common James in the office in my house with one employee to help me ship orders, and that's it. So kind of look around and see where we've come is really amazing. And right now I'm in a place where I'm just hiring really great leaders in each position so that I don't have to oversee everything because it's coming too big just for me, obviously. Because at the end of the day, I don't have the experience. I'm learning as I go and I'm figuring it out quickly, but I'm still learning. And so I need people in here who know what they're doing. What has actually been the most surprising or most interesting thing that you have learned during this time of starting your business? Oh man, I've learned a lot of stuff. I mean, I think, um, Personally, just um, dealing with people, I think has been a huge thing for me lately. We've, we're have we having everyone take all of these personality tests just because communication is really important. I'm right. very direct and, and to the point and then I'm moving on to the next thing and that's not okay for some people. Some people then think I'm mad at them and I'm like, no, I'm not mad at you. I just, so it's just communication is key within a company and culture. We're really working on culture right now and, and just making it a really positive, warm environment. You know, we have a very unique situation because of the show. The show, Very Cavalry, sort of encourages encourages drama and gossip. And then as soon as the cameras stop, I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's done now too. And so it's hard for people to kind of like, you know, separate the two almost. Right. You know, you have let cameras back into your life with Very Cavallari. What kind of questions did you have to ask yourself or kind of come to terms with before making that decision to go down that route again? Well, it was tricky because initially when I pitched the show, I wasn't really supposed to be on it. It was just supposed to be about my staff, um, a la Vanderpump Rules, you know, and I would pop in and out here and there. And they ended up focus group testing the show. Um, I convinced Jay somehow to do one scene for the, the presentation that we did. And that's what everybody responded to, was the scene with the two of us. And so E kind of came back and said, listen, we'll do this if it's more about your life. But it was definitely a tough decision for Jay and I. You know, Jay's new to this world. He's never done reality TV before. He's very private. So we just decided from the beginning that we always had to talk about what we're both willing to put out there and what we're not. And um, I have to say, it's been a very, uh, smooth transition into reality TV for him and we've ultimately had a lot of fun. How do you deal with that kind of pressure of, of letting people see you as a as a startup essentially and, and seeing warts and all of what it takes to run yeah. a business? It's interesting, the business side of things and showing people you know, some of those vulnerabilities, that's a little scary to me because we haven't even been in business two years and we're essentially still a startup and it's growing pains. There's hiccups along the way. We're figuring it out, but then 
when we show it on TV, everyone then feels like they can judge us and criticize us. And it's like, but hang on, you guys, we're still a startup, you know? So I don't know, it just is what it is. So how big has the company grown, like size-wise in terms of employees? Well, um, I essentially launched, or you know, right before the show aired, I had about four employees. Now I'm up to 85. <laughs> you said that you started Uncommon Dames kind of from your home, right? right. So what was that beginning like, <laughs> trying to get it off the ground? And were you doing everything yourself? So yes, I had a website guy um, who actually lives in New York. And then I had one girl who would come over once in a while to help ship. Otherwise, it was Jay and I. Jay would help me. He would. We had a nice little system. He would print the label. He would put it on the, the package. And I'd go and fulfill. And so, um, yeah, you know, it was different when we had not as many orders. So what does it feel like now to like walk into the space to see all of this happening, to see how much it's growing? Like, how does that feel? It's amazing. It's honestly one of the coolest experiences and I feel like because we're full steam ahead and we're going going, I don't get to really take a step back and be like, you know what, actually this is this is really cool. It's important to do, I think, but I also don't want to get complacent and think that this is it. I, there's just so much more that I still want to do. What's the most important thing you learned about yourself, being able to watch yourself grow up on screen? Well, I think because when I did Laguna Beach, I was so young, you know, 16, 17, 18, it's hard enough being those ages, but then having cameras with me, you know, you're really figuring out who you are. And I was obviously portrayed as the bitch, and that was really hard for me. So I really looked inward and I, said to myself, okay, I don't think I'm this girl, but if there's a slight chance that I am, I don't want to be that girl. And so, I don't know, maybe in a lot of ways it really helped me become the woman that I am today. And maybe I was going down a path of being that snotty little brat. <laughs> I think editing had a lot to do with it too, but, but it did, I think everything that I've done in my life, you know, obviously as cheesy as it is, it's made me who I am today. So I'm, I'm grateful for all of it, all the good and bad. What do you think people most underestimate about you? And how do you either, you know, prove them wrong or use it to your advantage? I mean, I'd say that people who underestimate me, I definitely use to my advantage. I think it just pushes me harder and just wants me to prove everybody wrong. Um, I don't know, I think some people probably just think, things have been handed to me or I don't really work that hard, but I bust my ass with Uncommon James and, you know, I know we're having a huge moment right now, this wave of success, but it's not good enough for me. There's still so much that I want to do and I'm going to show everybody that I'm going to be a household name one day. Uncommon James is and I'm just going to keep fighting and keep pushing until I get there.